Hello, welcome to another lunch break with Healing Journeys Today. My name is Lance Williams, and today I want to talk to you. Well, first, we're discussing uh, the topic biblical worldview. To, to have a biblical foundation, to view the world and to view life through a biblical lens, otherwise known as a paradigm. We need to have a biblical paradigm. And so today I want to talk to you about what is the biblical paradigm or what is the biblical worldview on immigration and borders. That's right, immigration and borders. Yes, the Bible talks about that. You know, everything that we face in life, every issue that we deal, deal with on every level, the Bible talks about in some form or another. And yes, the Bible speaks about immigration and about borders and boundaries. And I want to get into that and I want to, I want to share with you what the Bible says about this topic. And it's very important that we understand these things. You know, the number one reason that people leave churches, according to a survey done by George Barna, is because they say it's, it lacks relevancy. They, they don't feel like church is relevant. And there's a reason for that. See, back in the, in here in America, I know some of you may be watching from other countries, but here in America, you can go back and read historical sermons. And the historical sermons in the 1700s and the 1800s, and even on into the 1900s, they, it was very relevant. Whatever was happening in society, the preachers would preach over what was going on. If there was a, um, what do you call those? Um, I'm going blank on the name, but the uh, like fires and natural disasters, that's what I'm looking for. If there was a natural disaster like a fire, tornado, earthquake, things like that, preachers would actually preach on what the Bible says about those issues. And see, and it was relevant because it was what the Bible says about current issues. And not all, but a lot of pastors have gotten away from that. Now, a lot of pastors, they have compartmentalized things. And now, a lot of pastors, they preach 52 weeks worth of salvation a year. And that's just, look, I'm all for salvation. We, we need salvation. But then what do we do with that salvation? That's what we need to talk about. Jesus said, make disciples. And he actually said, make disciples of all nations, which we're going to talk about today. But make disciples of all nations. He didn't say... Just preach salvation. Make disciples. A disciple means to be a learner. That's what the word disciple means. It means to be a learner. To learn the ways of Jesus. To learn the ways of the word. And to apply those in our everyday life. So I want to start off with the question. Well, first of all, there's two main sets of ideology here. There's a nationalist view and there's a globalist view. And so let's read the definition of that. Globalism, it's the attitude or policy of placing the interest of the entire, entire world above those of individual nations. I'll read it again. Globalism is the attitude or policy of placing the interest of the entire world above those of individual nations. And both of these definitions I'm going to read are according to dictionary.com. Okay, then what is nationalism? Nationalism is devotion and loyalty to one's own country, or otherwise known as patriotism. Again, nationalism is a devotion and loyalty to one's own country, Semicolon, patriotism. These are the two different views on immigration and borders. One side believes there should be no borders, that we should just let everybody go where they want and should have no boundaries. The other side, uh, the other side of the view is, yes, there needs to be boundaries and 
Uh, we need to have different nations instead of just a one world. So the question is, is God a globalist or a nationalist? Well, let's look at it. The city of Babel. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11. This is most commonly referred to as the Tower of Babel, but it's actually uh, more properly translated. It's the Tower of Babel, but it's also the City of Babel. And so, in the City of Babel, uh, in the City of Babel, let's just read it real quick. Verse one of Genesis 11. Now, the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone. And I don't know what that word is. And this is in the English Standard Version. Bitumen for mortar. For mortar. Verse 4, then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower. That's why I say that, because most people refer to it as only a tower, but it's build us a city and a tower. Come, let us build a city and a tower with its tops, with its top in the heavens, and let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down. I want to point out, they said, let us make a name for ourselves. Not let us glorify the name of God. Not let us make a name for the Lord. But let us make a name for ourselves apart from God, is what they were talking about here. In verse 5 it says, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they had that they purposed, nothing that they purposed to do will now be impossible to them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from all they're all over the face of the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over all the face of the earth. And this is a picture of globalism. This is people coming together as one, building a city and a tower to make a name for themselves. Well, folks, you need to be aware of something. There, this kind of thing is still going on today. There is still people meeting in, in specific areas. One of them is in Davos, Switzerland. There is a group called the World Economic Forum that they are meeting and they're discussing their plans for the world. And it's a plans that's not good. It's not good at all. They want to have total control over our food, over the energy, and over our currency, our money. And if they can control those three things, then they can control the whole world. And they have a specific plan by 2030. And even in that plan, they said that we will own nothing and, quote, be happy. Well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's not good, folks. And this is a this is a globalist movement. And look, I'm I'm not I want to be clear here. I'm not just trying to be political. This is a moral issue, and we need to speak up on these things. And what I'm what I'm trying what I am communicating with you is this tower and city of Babel that goes back to the book of Genesis that the enemy has been trying to do this throughout history, time and time again. And he's still doing it today through this group called the World Economic Forum that are discussing plans for the world. They want to limit what we can eat. They want to limit how much we can eat, what we can eat. They're talking about us eating manufactured meat. 
And it's, look, this is not conspiracy. This is out there. This is in their books. This is in, you can go watch their program on YouTube, World Economic Forum, and they talk about these things. They want this whole carbon footprint thing. They're wanting to control travel. And then they're talking about a digital currency and controlling money. Well, like I said, those three things, if they can control the food supply, they control people. If they control energy, they can control whole continents. And if they control the money, then they can control the whole world. This is a very, very dangerous thing. Dangerous thing. And we, as believers, as the body of Christ, need to be aware of these things. We need to know what's going on. And again, this goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. This is nothing new. There's nothing new under the sun. And these people, they, they will accomplish unless we, as believers, are knowledgeable about what's going on and unless we stand up and take a stand together and say, No, you're not doing this, Satan. You are not going to do this. We must stand up. We must submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. But in order to, well, we're, we should already be submitted to God, but in order to resist the devil in this area, we need to know what's going on. And that's why I'm doing these lunch breaks with you, to let you know what's going on in the world and also what is the biblical worldview, what is the biblical response to what's going on.